Hi folks, Mr. Ackerman here. Thanks for watching. Uh, in today's video, I'm going to show you how I went about my self-directed photo shoot that involved manipulating objects and light. The project that I chose to do involved taking a glass filled with water as well as some uh, food coloring and some lights that were shining at various angles and then dropping the food coloring into the water and watching the patterns that it made as it kind of dispersed or swirled around. So I'm in bridge here and what I'm going to do is first go to my setup photo. So if I hit the space bar here, that's going to get bigger. You can see basically what I did. I took an LED light and I put it down flat and I shined it up into a glass of water. I had my food coloring, four different colors, all ready to go. My phone was just balanced against another glass that I happened to found, find because uh, I needed my hands free to be able to drop the food coloring in and also hold the second light at various different angles to experiment and create the effects that I wanted. And uh, you might be wondering, how did I actually take the photo? At first I thought, well, I'll just plug in my, um, my headset and then I can use the volume button to release the shutter of the camera but the, um, the phone jack is underneath, so I couldn't do that. Uh, what I had to do is use the timer on the camera. So basically, what, uh, what resulted were the following 10 or 11 images. Let's start with the first one over here. If I expand on that, you can see what I've done. Uh, I held up a white, uh, the back actually of a uh, placemat behind it. It's supported from behind by another object, and that gave me a clean background so that there wouldn't be any distractions and uh, I dropped in the red food coloring. This light is shining up. There's actually a second light just up here you can sort of see coming down. And uh, I took some photos using the timer and one of them I happen to like. Uh, let's move on to the next one. Now I thought, well, you know what? I wonder what would happen if I added a bunch of different colors. So I actually added, as you can see, blue and green and uh, I had a fourth color yellow, but I found that it didn't really show up too much and it kind of dispersed and muted the other colors, so I didn't <clears throat> really use that here. But then I thought, well, eh, let's see if we can get one that actually works, and you can see the yellow kind of making its way in there. Anyway, moving along, here's uh, where I decided to change things up a little bit, and I used some fizzy water, some club soda that was in the fridge. I thought, I wonder what the rising bubbles would do, and uh, as you can see, the rising bubbles left little streaks and uh, they also serve to kind of disperse the food coloring more quickly so as a result of that I ultimately chose not to use it but I did kind of get curious what would happen if I put my second light on top and didn't use any food coloring but just watch the bubbles go up not overly interesting but kind of cool and I'm glad I experimented with it continuing on uh, here's what happened when I really let the colors all mix and mingle longer than in the previous ones. So now I was experimenting with the amount of time that it took for the, the food coloring to disperse. Here you see it again, and now you're really starting to kind of lose any um, fine detail in there. Now I got the idea, well, what if I swirled the water first and then put in the food coloring? So you can see there's kind of this V shape. You can imagine it would kind of be like uh, if you ever swirl a glass of water and you kind of get that little tornado effect. So this was kind of fun. I played around with it for a little while. And here's one where I added lots of colors in there. I think all of them except green are in there. And uh, here I played around with just yellow and green, thinking how, how would they go together? Would it give me some interesting contrast and color? And finally, I played around with just blue. And I believe that's one of my last photos. Yep, we're back to the beginning. So in the end, I did a lot of experimenting with uh, fizzy water, regular water, still water, um, swirling water one color, more than one color, and in the end I decided that the one image that caught my eye the most was this one over here, and I'll tell you why in a moment. First I'm going to right click and then I'm going to open in Camera Raw. It's going to take me right into Photoshop with its Camera Raw extension. So let's just make that a bit bigger so that we can see everything as best as possible. Okay, so first off, here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm usually going to adjust the brightness to a level that's about right. So that I think is too, definitely too bright there and definitely too dark there, but somewhere in the middle I'm happy. So let's call it there around plus one. And I like to add some contrast, not too much or everything gets um, it's kind of dark and, and not very nice and also not too little or it gets washed out. 
So maybe somewhere around here, just over 20 points, which is kind of the sweet spot I find. Uh, the highlights, there's a lot of bright highlights down here that I'd like to control. Let's bring that down. Makes a little bit of a difference, not too much. The shadows, I don't know that I need to add, raise the shadows too much, maybe a bit so I can see some detail up here. The white level, maybe just to give a little bit of punch in there, but you're kind of fighting against dropping the highlights, so I don't want to do that too much. Lowering the black level, I always like to do this, at least try to do it, uh, because I find it makes the tones a bit richer. And finally, I like to add a bit of clarity for a little bit of extra punch, but not too much. Or again, all those beautiful colors kind of get, uh, get a little too dark. And finally, I'm going to add a bit of vibrance because I like those colors. I want them to be nice and rich and be careful with saturation. It's easy to go too far and kind of get that pukey look. So I think right about there. And then I'm going to hit the preview button. Remember, mine is down here. Yours and your version of Photoshop is at the top. So before, after. Did it improve? I think so. I'm also going to do one other thing since there's so much color in here and different colors. I'm going to go to the HSL sliders. I'm going to click luminance, which is the brightness, and let's see what happens. If I brighten up the reds, you can see some detail comes out near the top, and I like that, so I'm going to leave that there. Orange, whoa, lots coming in here. Definitely want to do that. Yellows, same sort of thing. Now, do I want it brighter or do I want it darker? Uh, I think I like it on the brighter side, so I'm going to put it here. Green, also kind of an interesting effect, and aqua. So now I think I like that darker. And the blues, hmm, pretty interesting. Nice contrast between the colors there. But brighter is also kind of interesting. Which one do I like? I'm going to go with darker for now. Purple, uh, I'm going to leave it about there. And magenta, probably going to be similar to purple. So now again, hit preview. Do I like what I did? Definitely. I think it looks a lot more interesting like this. And so at this point, I'm pretty happy with what I have. The last thing I want to do is realize that I'm not particularly crazy about this light down here. Not much I could do about it, but I can definitely get rid of that by dragging out a crop box like that. And maybe this edge here, I don't like too much, so I'm going to bring that in. And this one here, kind of make it symmetric. And I don't think we need a lot going on up there. So let's bring this to there and hit enter. And here's my photo. So at this point, I'm going to tell you what it is that I like about the photo. Uh, what, I, what I noticed, and I don't know if you see this, but it kind of looks like a mermaid to me. This is the mermaid's tail down here. Here's the waist, and these might be arms here. Uh, actually, do mermaids even have arms? I don't know. I'll have to ask my younger daughter because she knows all about them. This might be the mermaid's hair kind of floating around. And so I found that this photo was the most interesting. Uh, with cropping, I'm starting to realize I'm not crazy about what's going on at the top here, so I'm going to lower that and take a look. That's a bit better. So now let's shift, click, and open the object in Photoshop. And here we go. Now to see this nice and big, what I can do is hit the F button once to go to partial full screen, and then a second time for complete full screen, and then Control-0 to fill the frame. And here's my final photo. Uh, let's talk a little bit about it. What do I like about it? What don't I like? Well, first of all, these scratches that I didn't realize were on the glass I chose, not cool. I could have chosen a better glass to use, like something newer that wouldn't have these scratches. I think it would be much better for the final image. Another thing is there's this shadow down here, which is as a result of how I position my lights. If I shine some light into that area, then those shadows would go away. I think I'd be happier with that. There's a little bit of blurriness here, and that's probably got to do with how I focus the camera. So I could go back and fix that. Also, I'm not sure I really like the fact that you can even tell that there's a glass here. I should have maybe repositioned the camera so that all of that was removed, but I still was able to fill the frame with the mermaid-like shapes. Uh, in terms of elements of art, I really like the colors here. I think they work really well, and they help define the shape of the mermaid. Um, I also like the lines. I think there's thin lines, there's thick lines, there are multicolored lines. Uh, they, they, by luck, happen to go in, in a pattern or a shape that reminds me of a mermaid, so I like that. I know I couldn't replace that or re replicate that all the time. It's kind of a luck of the draw sort of thing, but that's why I took so many photos. 
I was hoping one would turn out with something that I liked. So in the end, uh, I've told you now what I like about it. I've told you some of the things I don't like and how those could be improved. And that's it. I think it was a successful shoot, but there's definitely room for improvement. And uh, another thing just for further steps going forward, there is a way in Photoshop to actually crop this so that you can kind of eliminate the white behind it. I'm not going to show you that right now, but if you're interested in looking it up, it's called Perspective Crop. And I'm just going to hit the F key so that we get back here. When you go into the Crop tool here and you right click, you'll see this. And just to give you a rough idea, you can click, uh, oh, this tells me I can't use, oh, I've got layers in here, so I can't use this. Well, that's a whole other story, but basically what the perspective crop, if it was working the way I want it to, would let me do is to drag a line out right along here, all the way down and across and to there, and basically cut this out of what's behind it. And then I would have a full image with no white background. Anyway, that's the topic of another video, but I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching, and I'm looking forward to seeing your results in class. Bye-bye for now.